everybody. It's time. Awesome. Okay, over to Brenda and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and Lucas. Oh, no, not Lucas. <laughs> oh, well, you're recording. Oh, my. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the mailbox power builders call um mastermind call where we have a forum for you to ask questions and learn from each other because this is not all about mike and brenda this is about you so this call is a chance for you to get help from everyone in the group not just us and we've had some great discussions the last few weeks. If you are watching the recording and you did not watch the recording from the last couple of weeks, uh, especially last week, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it. Um, they are all available on YouTube. Um, and the links are always put in the affiliate group to the replays and also on the post. So with that, um, any ahas this past week? I know Lulu and I met yesterday, I believe it was. Um, but anybody else have any ahas this past week or want to share your goals for this year? Have you looked at your numbers from last year like we talked about and where do you wanna be this year? Lulu, do you want to share a little bit from our discussion? You're muted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, we had such a great discussion. Talk about ahas and uh, whatnot. And and breaking it down, I, I mean, it, it was so helpful. And by looking at the past numbers, and the volume and all of that, um, you know, uh, I don't have my phone handy, but we what we did is we went through how many executives I have, pro annuals, pro uh, light, and so forth. And the bottom line is I realized I'm closer than I thought. And, um, you know, just breaking it down in, with the numbers, now I know what I need to do and it's totally doable. So if you're feeling like, oh, how am I ever going to get there? Sitting and breaking down the numbers and figuring out how many, obviously we all are looking more, I think this year for executives. So how many of those do you need? How many pros? And I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but it, it really helped me because I've never really been good at figuring that type of thing out. I don't have the, I just don't have the bandwidth or the patience or whatever to do it. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was great. It was really great and it's totally doable. And, um, and I've thought about how I'm going to get there, which is, um, doing more collaborations, looking for people who are, um, we have the same customers, but we don't compete. And I met with some gals today who are branding specialists and they're like excellent people to align myself with. Yes. We, we had an hour long meeting today and now we're, we're all thinking about how we're going to, how we're going to help each other. So I think that's good to have people to help you do the heavy lifting, creating those relationships. And so, um, that's sort of the whole, for me, was the big picture, opening my eyes to number one, I'm closer than I thought, giving myself credit for how much I've accomplished in the last year. And then moving forward, what do I need to do each month? And and you also told me to keep track, not just of the conversations that I have, but the conversations with people who I ask. <laughs> you ask because for the sale. You ask for the sale. And um, so those were some good takeaways that I had yesterday. Awesome. Well, it, it I had some ahas talking to Lulu yesterday too. It just talk, every time we talk to any of you, uh, Lulu, Marie, Andrew, I mean, I think every time we have a conversation with Andrea, it's like, 
you know, <laughs> we think of uh, new ways to market our business and we learn from all of you. So um, I also appreciate the time um, that we spent yesterday, Lulu. And we talked about, like she said, keeping track of your conver conversations that you ask for the sale. Because I can promise you, I was in some of your seats, if you're this person, where you talk to a lot of people, but you never ask for the sale. You tell them what you do. You tell them about Mailbox Power, but you don't take the next step and say, can we get you started? Or what? which membership seems right for you? Or you ask for the sale. I mean, if all you do is tell them about it and you haven't asked them to join, a lot of people will take that as an out. Um, and so I asked Lulu to track how many conversations she's having because I asked her what her conversion rate was. I said, do you know how many conversations you need to have in order to gain one executive or one pro, one membership? And she's like, nope, nope. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and so those are good things to track yes. because if you know your numbers and you know you need to talk to 10 people, now it makes it easy yeah. to reach the numbers. Well, somewhat easy. It it makes it doable and you know what you have to do to get to where you want to be. Yeah. And the more you do it, the better those numbers get. So if it's one in 10 and after several weeks or, or a month, now maybe it's two or three in 10 and then four or five in 10. That, the more we can up your um, signups for the number of call, uh, the number of appointments or the number of Zooms, the better off you are and the, the easier it is to build your business. Nanette. There we go. Hi, everybody. Um, you're talking about closing the sale, asking for the sale. I have a presentation in front of a small networking group of maybe 30 people tomorrow morning. And I was going to talk about the five reasons to love on your clients. Um, and everybody will get this handout. But do I ask for an appointment? Do I, how do I close, get some action out of this? Before I answer, I want some suggestions from all of you because there's a couple of superstars on here um, that I think can answer that. Anybody got any advice for Nanette? I missed the question. So she's doing a presentation tomorrow morning to a group of about 20 to 30 people. And she wants to know how to ask for the sale during the presentation. Does she and that, do they all do the same thing? Are these people all in the same industry? No, they're no. all over the place. They're all over the place. I've been with this group for a year. I have recruited, recruited, wrong term. I have signed up 10 people out of this group over the last year. But there are still people like the um, carpet cleaning guy and the electrician and the plumber, you know, that sort of guy, folks that have don't see the value in this yet and those are the folks i think that could benefit from this in the long run so and how do I, I, we're going to see the five reasons to love on your clients so marie they've all received things from you no they have had the opportunity to receive things from me i um a couple months ago um, gave them the opportunity to get free brownies. And I had a couple people do that, but um, they've gotten these handouts, like these postcards with different information on them throughout the year. I've done 
two other presentations to the same group. So, um, so that I, um, so I'm going to read into what Marie was saying. They really haven't experienced the product. No. I, I think the other thing too, that I think Marie was driving at is, um, you giving them the opportunity to experience it. I don't think they should, I don't think you should approach it that way. That's just my own personal opinion. I think what you do is you just take it upon yourself to have them experience that. Um, and you may not get everybody that, uh, you know, you may not be able to sign up everybody that you, you give that experience to, but I think that's the only way that you're going to be able to get them to actually experience what it is that you do. Um, and that just my thoughts. Murray, where were, where were you going? Well, that's what I wanted to know is because I'm not sure I would um, be trying to get them to open an account or get them to do a one-to-one -one with me. I'm, I'm like, I'm done with one-to-ones. Uh, as I've said before, I think um, I want to demonstrate for them, how they should thank and appreciate someone um, by sending a card and a, and a two pack of brownies. And so without telling them what you're going to do, I would, I would send them a card and, and brownies or a card and something thanking them for attending your presentation, for making the time to attend your presentation. So that's the way I would do it. I would demonstrate. Okay. Let let the cards and gifts do the talking. Yeah. I have an idea. I don't know if it overlaps with what Marie just said, but what about bringing in, um, like make it interactive presentation. So you bring in a box a sealed box as big or as little as you want and invite two people to come up and and participate in your presentation something i know is last minute it's tomorrow morning so this might not work out for you but one person or both people you could have and do your presentation to them and then afterwards you know, demonstrate person A doesn't use mailbox power, gets nothing, doesn't send anything, doesn't get anything, right? And then the other person you hand this box to and they get to open it and experience getting something, opening the package and and maybe start to understand without you having to wait seven days to ship them something. You follow where I'm kind of headed with the interactivity thing it's kind of a, a a role play i've done that before it's been a long time thanks for mentioning it andrea um but you bring two people up and um i did it when i was demonstrating with a realtor group um way back when we first got the um uh the two and a half year realtor closing gift right closing um deal and so i had two people seated at the front of the room and every day they would or I would say, you know, today's Monday, go to the mailbox and check your mail. And so one person would get a bunch of junk in their mail. And so I had a lot of stuff, you know, props that I brought with me and they'd get, you know, flyers and stuff like that. And then um, the, the client or one of the, they were both clients. They were both people who had, you had sold a home to. And um, um, one person every three months would get a gift. And so finally, the guy who wasn't getting anything but junk in his mailbox, he said, well, how do I get, how do I get to change mailboxes? <laughs> anyway, it got to be really fun because I they really it. got the idea that this person just keeps getting junk in his mailbox and this person every three months was getting something. Wow. So which one is going to remember you more favorably and talk about you, et cetera? I love that, Marie. How do I change my mailbox? <laughs> <laughs> Marie, I gotta say thank you. That was I'm not doing a presentation to realtors next week, so that's perfect. 
Thank you. And I think I think I heard Joe say this because this was not something I came up with. Somebody in Mailbox Power talked about having done that. And I just did it. And it 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 went over really well for, you know, for a realtor presentation. That's awesome. I do, I don't remember who, but I have heard that before. I've never done it, but I have heard of people doing that. And having two different people and one gets opens the mailbox and not necessarily just junk, but there's nothing there. Yeah. And the other one gets a package or gets a letter or gets a card. You know, I've heard of that being done. I've never done it. So that would be Charlie Brown for reminding me. Huh? Wow. That would be Charlie Brown getting nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Any other, I know Lulu shared something yesterday that yep. actually Nanette might be able to do tomorrow because she might have some things on hand. Do you want to share what sure. you do, Lulu? Yeah, so I actually have a mailbox, a, a portable mailbox, and um, I put a bunch of stuff in it, some brownies and a puzzle and a coffee mug and whatever, um, uh, just some cards and things in the mailbox. And I took raffle tickets. Everybody got a little raffle ticket. And when I called their number, they got to go up to the mailbox and take something out. And just to experience, like this is what your customers are going to experience. They're going to go to their mailbox and they're going to open it up and there's something in there. And now they, I let them keep the stuff, but, um, you know, if you have, if you have some gifts around that are expendable, but it was really fun. And, and I got a customer out of it. That was probably a year or so ago. I did that. Well, maybe longer. I don't remember. Anyway, um, it was really fun and it was interactive. And, mm -hmm. and um, so if you don't have a mailbox, you could certainly I have That's one beautiful. if she doesn't and I'm in town. So oh, she could get go. one. <laughs> yeah, but it it was it was fun to do it and um and people enjoyed it and they talked about it. So um I'm gonna backtrack on something I said. I think what I did was I'm pretty sure this is what I did. It's like um two people are seated up front. This person's realtor was realtor A. And this person was realtor, uh, had realtor B and realtor B was, you know, they had names, of course, but realtor B was sending gifts to the buyer and realtor A never sent anything. And that's what the guy said, not switching mailboxes. He wanted to switch Which, realtors. Yep. So that I makes like that. a huge, that's, that makes a huge point. So that's great for a great way to do it. Mine was uh, a uh, networking group it wasn't realtors but I right. love that idea that's taking it a step further for realtors yeah. I love that any other ideas Kathy me and Tony both have our head, hands up Tony was before me I think she had was one to input something I don't think it was Nanette oh. did you have something for Nanette Tony no I did not oh, okay sorry. but if Kathy does let her go Okay, so I do. So let me tell you what I do when I do my presentations to people. So um, what I do is I go in the room when I'm getting prepared and I'm in the room as they're coming in. I go and I say, hi, welcome. Thanks for coming today. What's your name? And then I say, Jeff or whoever, what what is your in what industry are you in? So I get to know who they are. So then during my presentation, I'll say like, say, Jeff said, oh, I'm Jeff. I'm a um, I'm an HVAC person, say. I said, oh, okay, that's great. You're in the right place. Um, we got some great ideas for you. And then during my presentation, I will actually take some of the pro talk about, this is if I don't have any props with me, okay? I'm just talking. And I'll just say, um, if you are in the HVAC industry, we have some great products that you can use. And then I'll talk about leaving the stick ups on their on their furnace or whatever with his information and a QR code. I think the QR codes are really, really effective right now and today everybody's using them. So make a little stick ups with your QR code and your information. And when you need maintenance or service, please call whatever 
and the QR code's there for them to scan that will go back to your phone number and stuff. So tell them how they can use each product and how it will benefit them. Um, a lot of times, and I know this is, sounds really kind of out there and it depends on the feel of your audience, but I will do stick ups and carry them with me and I will stick them on the back of the bathroom stalls when I'm in the washrooms in restaurants and things like that. So <laughs> it just depends on, you know, your audience and how you want to say it. So basically, um, I do that. I find out what each person I pick about five of them and then I will think about how they can each use it. When you tell them how they can use some of the products that we actually have, it gives them a better idea of what we do. So. That's just a suggestion um, that I do that seems to work. Any, That's really cool. Any other ideas? I have one. Yes, Terry. One for Nana. Go ahead. Okay. For me, for Terry? Yes. Oh, okay. Have you, have you or anybody else done like if that group is not tending to, the same group is not tending to use the products that much, like offer that anyone who sets up their account today will receive a 30 minute special attention with me, Zoom with me to get you started or to do such and such. You know how we used to say to do, we'll set up your first five cards and then maybe that, and then as they set up their account, you put, you know, they would each get that and you'd schedule it with them. Maybe that would be the extra an incentive because if they're all that kind of um, industrial worker type, blue collar type workers, they're not, they're not maybe as tech savvy and they need that extra help where you don't necessarily know that, but maybe you do know now because the group is like that, you know, in general. So that might help or you might get one because of that. So what I, I used to do that. So I used to sign up somebody and I would um, tell them when you, as soon as you open your account, we'll set up an hour to two hours and I go over the whole entire system with them. And if I'm in person with them, um, I sit down with them and I show them and then I have them sit down and do it. And so that by the time I leave them, they know exactly what they're doing. So that is what I used to offer to my, my uh, people when I sign them up. Yep. I love that, Terry. And I was hoping somebody would bring it up. I wanted to hear it from one of you, but I would do that, Nanette. Your closing should be anyone who either books an appointment with me to learn more or better yet, signs up and have the QR code to, I generally don't do the trial unless I'm in a room of a lot of people sign up today with the trial and I will schedule an appointment with you and you are going to get X, Y, and Z bonuses. If, or um, have them scan a link to a mailbox power group in, if you don't want to take them directly to your mailbox power trial link or to your page to sign up because they're less likely to do it through that. But if you had them put, scan a QR code and put their information in and they sign up within two days or three days because you got to have time to get to everybody or give them a week and you'll get all these extra bonuses, but only if you do it now. And you have to stick to it and not offer those bonuses again to that group. Tony, you had your hand raised. Uh, did you have something? Thank you all. <laughs> Great, great suggestion. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, Nanette. Thank you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I just thought I would uh, oh. let you know, I am terrible at uh, trying to figure out the numbers and all, all of these. And I'm just starting to get with this group to understand a little better how to do that. But um, I, I thought I should share something that happened today that's very exciting. Uh, after about two and a half years of supporting this lady who is, um, she's going to be a consultant to entrepreneurs. And I've been sending her cards for like two and a half years now, just, 
just hoping that she'll sign up and see the light that's really going to help her business. And she finally called me today and wants to sign up as a uh, an executive plan. She's paying the full year. Ahead, so I, I don't know what happened, but I'll tell you what. Timing is everything. I'm working these people. Yep. That's awesome, Tony. Congratulations. Wow. Thank now, you. Thank how you. many current executives do you have before she signs up? Zero. You, you have your first executive member. That is yes. awesome. And a whole year. That that is right. that was a shock. Yeah. That was a shock. That's something to celebrate. So you're well on your way. Yeah. So now I have to get nine more at least. <laughs> one in the first few weeks of the year yeah think of what you can do the rest of the year I think I can do pretty well awesome that's great I know you can Marie so I want to share something um, that has to do with a closing question I don't know how well it will work with a group uh like Nanette is talking about we maybe we can brainstorm that but um I have listened to a guy named Chris Boss, V-O-S-S, V as in Victor. He is a former FBI uh, hostage negotiator. And he um, uh, travels the country, the world now, and trains business people on how to um, communicate, negotiate, etc. And a phrase that he uses, and I've been using it, and it works really well. I have not so much with, I haven't used it so much with Mailbox Power, but something else I'm working on. Uh, and it is, um, would you be opposed to, and in the case of Mailbox Power, I can think of, you know, if you have presented, as Kathy was talking about um, when she presents, a closing question would be, would you be opposed to sending birthday cards for the next three months and really experiencing what would happen to your your business i would be happy to set up the birthday automation for you Ooh, i like that it's amazing when you say would you be opposed to people immediately think well no i wouldn't be opposed it's, yeah. it's a psychological response um <clears throat> they absolutely want to do it because they don't want to be opposed to anything. So I don't know how it would work with Nanette's situation for tomorrow as a group. Um, because I'm focused on, on bigger businesses now, um, I can see how I would have used it when I did one-to-ones. Um, but anyway, I, I just love the phraseology. It it's something for us to discuss. Yeah, would, would you be you, opposed to? Would uh, you be opposed to? I have. If would you be opposed to trying out the executive account for a month, and see and and and, ex, and experiencing all of the features it has to offer, and then deciding if it's not for you, you can always just go down to the pro account. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I, <laughs> That's pretty I would, good. I would just, this is just me. I would caution against saying, would you be opposed to one month of anything? Right. Because it takes time to get it set up and then there is mail time. So, so trying out, yeah. Would you so, be opposed to trying out, maybe? Yeah, and and I wouldn't say for a month. I would say for three months at a minimum. Okay. Would you be opposed to trying? Would you be opposed to giving this a try um, to see how it impacts your business? Yeah. Um, because it's going to take multiple reaches out to people to truly see the impact of it. So that's why I don't like the 14 day trial. I, 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 like I, I don't really like to um, suggest trying. Yeah. Um, I would, I mean, I'm, I think it's better to say, would you be opposed to sending 
birthday cards or whatever it is you're going to send, but actually sending, not trying, yeah. but sending it for the next six months. Yep. To actually experience the impact this has on your business. And then you talk and then you figure out which is the best account for them. I think what happens when you also give people a time frame, like a month, then you set the expectation that they're going to get results in a month. Yeah. <laughs> and as we know, results don't happen in a month. It yeah, has to, it has to happen over a period of three to six months mm -hmm. to be able to effectively give the platform an opportunity to work. And if you're not, if you're setting the it, the improper expectations and you're, you're not going to get the, uh, the people to stick with what you're. Uh, yeah. I forgot doing. about the old good old USPS part. Yeah. Um, oh, I just thought of something and I just lost it. Would you be, oh, it'll come back as we're talking. I thought of something and I lost it. <laughs> There's an, I can't remember who it was. Would you be opposed to making a return on your income? <laughs> I was saying, I was, I, I had heard someone else, I don't remember who it was, but they uh, say when you're talking to somebody, it's uh, about saying, uh, can I make a suggestion or can I, it, it's, it's almost like offering help and making suggestions as to what uh, they may be able to use uh, to build their business. Uh, I think it's permission selling or something like that mm -hmm. is, is what that is. I don't remember who it was. It came up with the concept, but it puts the client at ease in that knowing that they have, uh, they have the power to make the decision. Yes or no. That's good. Any other well, it's like, it's like saying, um, uh, you know, someone says something and you say, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Just curious, da, da, da. Right. Yep. Hi, oh. Gail Foley. I just saw you. <laughs> Any other questions or ahas? Gail? You, you went off mute. <laughs> if you got well, something, spit it out. <laughs> I'm just acknowledging Marie. Um, oh. All these suggestions are wonderful. I just presented to 250 business people today. I'm, I'm rather exhausted because wow. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't what I was planning to start the first of the year with. But it's I've been a part of it for 15 years, and so I know the group rather well. And so I did not give something out to everyone because they leave everything behind. Nobody takes the brochures. Um, so I put it, two cards on each table. One was vertical and one was horizontal. horizontal and it was all thought provoking with um, statistics and, and stats. And so my whole presentation was about the importance of keeping that customer because the power is in keeping them. And I've been preaching that for 17 years. And um, so I got a lot of compliments afterwards because I get very <laughs> wound up when I do these things. It was just a short thing. I was a sponsor for the luncheon. So there was three of us that got to give a little spiel. Um, but I did have some people come up. A realtor came up to me, wants to talk with me. Uh, two people wanted my card. Uh, another one I had a good conversation with on how he could use it. So I did get some results as I was there. One person that um, is a John Maxwell coach. I've been talking to this young man for two years. He said to me today, he says, I'm ready. I'm nice. Ready. And so it was because I don't do big presentations like that. I just, it's not what I do anymore. So <laughs> you know, I was caught off guard. Gail, which luncheon are you going to sponsor this year? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it's like, I do know. We never, we have only had 150 in that room before. So today was 250 and they were lined up out the door. Wow. Like, yeah, wow. So, so I'm a little tired tonight. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Nanette, I just thought of something as Marie and Gail were talking. And um, the other thing you could do that I have done in the past to close in a way, a group is to say, um, 
any, because really when you're in a networking group, it's not about selling to the people in the group. I realize that the people, the best way for them to refer you is for them to be a client, but it's about getting referrals from them, not about selling to them. It's about selling through them. So what you could do is offer that every referral between now and the end of January, you will get in a drawing for a $50 gift card or, but they, they have to be anybody that you refer that signs up for the system. So as long as the person becomes a mailbox power user, they will get in a drawing for a certain thing. And that might drive more referrals and they might refer themselves because then you're taking the pressure off so often. And I found myself even doing this early in BNI is I was selling to the members and I wanted all of them to be my customers because I knew if they were my customers, that was the best way to refer me. But when I started taking it off of them and the them feeling like they were a, not a target, but you know what I mean. And that it was just, who do you know that is an HVAC or a real estate person or a great referral for me would be anybody in your network that I started getting more outside referrals. Um, so thinking of a way to do it that maybe... Maybe they felt too much pressure um, and take the pressure off and just ask them for referrals. You can even take um, the postcards that you get in the mail, take some of those advertising postcards you have and say, everybody who gives me an actual name and number of a person to contact at the business, not just give me the postcard, but you got to have a personal connection with them. Anybody who gives me one of those is in a drawing, whether they become a client or not. Now you're taking the pressure off of them. Um, Brenda? Yes. Did I hear you right? Did you say um, anyone that refers, they will get a $50 gift card for the system? What do you do? Do you give them a $49 pro for a month? Nope. And I, for the system, I just say, and when you're in a networking group, you can say, I will, everybody who refers will get in a drawing. They don't all get $50. You will get no, in a but drawing. When they do, so say the person won the $50. It can be a local restaurant. It can be oh, okay. so that, a okay. $50 gift card to any other business that's in this group. That way you're supporting the group and you're supporting somebody else in the group and you're giving a referral to somebody else in the group by giving a 25 or a 50 dollar gift certificate to any business Does okay sorry that? i thought you meant you were giving no. 50 dollars for okay never mind nope i just misunderstood okay yep marie so um one thing you might consider doing is um would you be opposed to taking a photo with me immediately following this meeting so that I can put it in the card when I uh, am in touch with the referrals that you give to me so that I can say, you know, they can see me in a photo with you and you can use the same photo when I refer people to you. And everybody who takes the photo will be put in a drawing. And one lucky winner will get something that you send to them. But I, I really love the idea of, of when you're uh, introducing yourself to someone that they actually see you with the person who referred you. I've done that quite a bit in a card. I like that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Lots of great ideas. Thank you, everybody. I have a question about presentations people are giving. Like, what are you doing? Are you showing the system? Are you doing a PowerPoint? <laughs> you know, I'm just curious what other people are doing. I also have a real estate presentation this week to a small group. And it's a guy that 
lives in my neighborhood that I've been asking probably for two years if I could come into his office. So that persistence definitely pays off. I'm finally going this week. And I have, you know, like a kind of a realtor presentation that Joe used to give. Um, but I'm wondering what other people are using. Are you showing the system? Are you showing the list builder video that Ian did? Uh, what other things are people doing? Gail, you did a presentation today. Was it a PowerPoint? No, it was not a presentation. As a sponsor, I got to stand up in the room and give like a 40, 44 minute little quip. So I announced myself as a uh, being in the business of solving things, of being, how did I, I'm so tired, I don't remember. I said, I'm in the solution business and I was there to give them a solution. And then I said, I like let's that. set the, I said, let's set the stage. And I said, everybody in this room is here for one reason. And I said, it's not for the wonderful buffet that Kathy's team has put out, nor is it to hear Wendell's wonderful announcements for the year. No offense, anybody. But I said, you're all here for the same reason that I'm here. I want to meet someone new that might, might become my customer. And I said, so that's what we do. We spend a lot of time and energy and money to go after that new customer. And so you go and you go and you get them and you go, yes. And then what you do, you rinse and repeat and you go after more. But wait a minute. What about this person you just brought into the business? What, what What's going on there? And then I go into the stats, you know, did you know 68% of your customers will leave because of perceived indifference? Because if they don't hear from you, their perception is you don't care. And silence is not golden when it comes to customer engagement. And so then I gave him more stats about if you just had five more, five percent more retention in your business, you could have profits going from 25% to 95% more. And so if you want to know more, I just gave you that solution. You can reach out to me, you can take the card on the table, and we can talk. You can find me at gailfoley.com. That was my thing. So awesome. Don't squat. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Marie. Um, so in answer to Kim's question, and I haven't done this in a long in, in some quite some time, Kim, but um, if I were to do a presentation for a realtor group, I would not use slides and um it would not be about the system. Um, I created a presentation. The name of my business is Wow Your Contacts. And I created a presentation called The Wisdom of Wow. And it's all about the psychology behind why you would use, um, you know, why you would send cards, why you would put their names on it, why a package. Um, and then, you know, at the end, the best system I have found to accomplish all of this is um, the one that I recommend to others. And that's when I tell them what it is. But it's I'm I'm not trying to show them the system or use um, I, and I do use powerpoints, but not power not Joe's powerpoints. Okay, so you. that's what I've done. Awesome, Gail. I'm I wanted to write down your your well. It, I'm going to call it Gail's <laughs> quote. Silence <laughs> isn't golden. What did you say? Silence is not golden in the world in take in customer service or customer engagement. Ah, I put customer service, but I was like, I thought she said something else. Yeah, customer engagement, because, you know, we all, silence is golden. You ask a question, you shut up. That's golden because you wait for the answer. The first one that talks is, you know, the loser. But in this case, you know, that's to me, it, that was my biggest, that was the piece that when I was practicing it, I kept leaving that out. I'm like, that is the golden transition statement. You have to remember that. So yeah, that that to me is very powerful to be saying that. Well, yeah, I love I I love rinse and repeat. Yeah, <laughs> that's what people do. They exactly. don't they forget about the people that that are, have already engaged with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah. that. I wrote it Thank down. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, any other ideas? Kim. I like, go ahead, Gail. So when I came back, I calculated 
who actually talked to me for the results. Um, and then the confirmation of a person coming on, but then one of my customers that dropped off at December said, I'm coming back. We need to talk. And then I also counted how many cards that I had left because they just don't pick them up. They leave brochures, they leave all gift certificates. They just leave everything because it's a business organization. They all got to get back to work. And so I took 50 cards and I put two on each table. And I took a, a group of postcards I also had since I found out there were 250 people. Um, and I had 12 cards taken. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but with that group, that's a yeah. lot. That's good. And then I also gave a um, set of coasters as a gift too so awesome kim sometimes i do a power it really depends on how much time i have sometimes i do a powerpoint but i find sort of like marie and i think she just had to drop off i know she had a meeting um is i don't want to talk about mailbox power and i'll bring gifts and if the presentation is soon I want them to see and touch. I want it to be tangible to them. Um, if all it is is a PowerPoint, they don't get it. Whereas if start they start to see the gifts and they see whether it's got their name on it or somebody else's, they see the personalized brownies or a personalized um, laser engraved um, duo or trio or cutting board. It it sparks an aha moment in them, especially if it has something to do with real estate. Um, and I always, when I do a presentation, especially if I'm doing it to a group, like a real estate group um, or an office, I always offer bonuses, but they got to sign up. And sometimes I say that day, but most of the time I give them a week because if I'm going into a room of 30, I don't want to sign all, I do, but I don't want to sign up all 30 today because I can't get to all 30 of them. I would rather give them a week and have them trickle in so that I'm talking to a few a day versus um, the other way, because then it seems more manageable to me. But that's yeah. just how I work. Lots of people will do it that you got to sign up on the spot. You got to do no, it. I was today. planning on giving them time because I, it's a small office. So um, I'll be lucky if there's 10 people there, honestly, it's okay. a very small office, but um, I already went to his office last week to show him what I was going to do. And I was going to do the PowerPoint, but now I'm having second thoughts about it after all of your feedback. So I have to think about it, but um, I do have plenty of things to show them. I'm planning on bringing in lots of gifts and cards and things all realtor focused and I sent a box to myself of stuff, but I'm not sure it's going to get here on time because I was a little bit slow in doing that. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed it'll get here tomorrow, but I'm not sure. But if it doesn't get here in time for the presentation, I'll just bring him some stuff after. Like I said, he lives in my neighborhood. I'll bring him a whole bunch of goodies after and just tell him to hand them out to his people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and Joe's presentation worked to real estate. He did it over and over again, and he had a really good closing. So don't feel bad to do it. it right. You already have something, and if you can tweak it a little bit to make it more Kim, yes, even the better. Yes, yes, I, I have changed some of the things in it, but I was going to awesome. use it as a basis. And yeah, uh, and Ian's video is in there as part of it. And I think when I showed it to him, the owner, you know, the broker owner. He, you know, he's a seasoned realtor. He's been in the real estate business for like 30 or 40 years. You know, the other people he said that would be interested in the list builder, we actually did a test. We did like zip codes in the area for renters. And he said that he could see some of the newer realtors interested in that for sure. Um, so I'm planning on using that same exact example and showing them how I would look that up in the system. So I am planning I would... on doing the demo of the list builder because I think it's key for the new realtors that don't have anybody. They don't have any clients yet. How are they going to get started? And he I thought that was valuable. Yeah, I think that's very valuable when you can get in and show them an example and in ask somebody in the room, find out who needs to farm and have them tell you the demographics. Yes. And exactly. use their demographics versus something that's preset 
now they start to understand how they can use it versus just a right. generic example. Right. Like we do when we do the training for Mailbox Power and we ask for a person to give me demographics, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yep. See how yep. they can use it. That's exactly what I'm planning on. Yeah, doing. get them involved. Yeah. Tony. Know. I just wanted to ask you, you had mentioned um, offering a bonus when you're when you're uh, presenting to a realtor group. And this is what I'm going to be doing in about a month. And I wondered what you meant by that. You, you have to pick what you can do, Tony. So obviously, um, Mike and I are certified trainers. We're designers in the system. We have the done for you program that we do. I don't know how much of that you want to do. Um, so you have to decide, do you want do you want to be the one that sits down with them for a half an hour or an hour? What bonuses do you have something that you've designed that you can say, I'll give you for free? Have you designed a birthday? and a half birthday that are your design, not something they get in the design store. Um, those are the type of things you can give as bonuses. Um, everybody's a little different in what, what they have that they can throw in. Kathy. Um, Tony, I think another thing you can do, and for those people that, you know, don't, um, know what to give. One thing that we can all give, and I think everybody on here is the same, is you can give them an overview of the system on a Zoom call and just go through each menu item and tell them what it does. Because that's a really good place to give somebody that's never used it a little overview. And that would be a bonus, you know, and, and that's something that everybody can do. I call it the 10 cent tour. <laughs> that's cute <isn't> it? <laughs> but that that's... was a that was a point that brenda um made with me yesterday because i tend to to just help everybody and and really you know our time is valuable and if we are all here for the same reason which is to build our business then we do have to we we have to offer bonuses but it has to be in relation to what they like, what, what plan they're on too, you know? Um, and, and that's something that really, that was a t total aha with me yesterday. Um, and, and what I told Lulu yesterday is I personally make everyone now, I didn't used to make them watch the 101 training video prior to ever sitting down with them. Yep. Because I don't need to do a guided tour of the system because it's already there for you pre-recorded. What I can do is you go watch that. That's going to spark questions in how you want to use the system. And then we will meet and I will help you get your first automation set up. Or I will answer your questions based on how you want to utilize the system. And and that to me, it, that's that's got a twofold purpose. Number one, it makes them responsible. Like I'm not going to be there to hold your hand every time you have a question or whatever. So when you, you know, get yourself on my calendar when you've watched the video, and then see what they do. Now, I mean, not that I wouldn't if I see them and I and they haven't scheduled. Or, or, you know, I think of them, I have them on my list. Hey, you know, I noticed you haven't scheduled, you know, don't forget to watch that video. I'm here to help you when you've done that. And that gives them some of the responsibility and sets the tone and the expectation that, yeah, I'm here to help you, but you're going to do, this is your system. Well, and there's yeah. tools and resources for you yeah. because yep. I'm very much like Lulu and I give and give and give and people would call and say, now I need help with this and now I need help with that. And um, it doesn't, it's like giving a fisherman, what, what's the teach him? You can give, can a, never remember. You can give a man a fish, but if you teach him to fish, he'll eat every day. Yep. And if you teach them where all the tools are in the system, 
then they don't need you. And I've had people that at 11 midnight, they're night owls and they're doing everything at night and they don't feel like they can call me. And I don't want them calling me that late at night, but they get stuck and then they get frustrated with the system. And that's how you lose them. Whereas if you've given them the tools and you've shown them where all the tools are, they can go find the answers themselves and don't feel like they're stuck. Yeah. That's a great bonus too. Yeah. To give them. And, yep. you know, having uh, having a YouTube channel where you can direct people to training videos is another great uh, thing that you can offer people to say, hey, if you get stuck, search here and see what you can find in regard to the questions you have about the system. The, that's the, great. Um, not just that, but like Tony, if you don't want to sit down with people, if you don't want to do the half hour or an hour, because there's a lot of affiliates that are they're building a different business. They're not here to truly build in a way mailbox power. They just want to share a tool with other businesses that they've found that's awesome, that's helped them in their business. And they don't want to do a 30 minute or an hour, but they can still offer bonuses because they have found videos that helped them. And they could be YouTube videos. It could be with things on the website, put together a checklist. This is the things that helped me. And I will provide the checklist to you as a bonus. Mary. Yeah, I had a couple of things um, about the, anyone else that's doing a realtor presentation anytime soon, like Kim and I are doing. Um, I have talked with a few of the realtors that are using Mailbox Power currently and promoting that to other realtors. And one of the things that they have, I've talked to three different realtors that have used Mailbox Power to recruit other realtors. And one of the things they mentioned was talking to the realtor groups about uh, using mailbox power for FSBOs, uh, for, for sale by owners and expired listings, um, because that's really where the bread and butter is in the system, at least on in their eyes, for realtors to really get those new customers um, uh, in the door, if you will, and stand out from other realtors that might be trying to get those listings. So that's one of the focuses I'm going to have in my meeting next week, uh, for sure, um, on the other thing I wanted to mention was that um, sometimes I get a lot of <laughs> what you guys were talking about just now of people wanting me to show them everything and do everything for them. And sometimes I do if I really just have the time, but if I don't, I, I do direct them to certain videos, um, which does help sometimes. But um, I think what I'm finding is that some of the people that are just not really... Um, as good with the computer as maybe I am, they still tend to get very frustrated. And so um, that's when I try to direct them to a certain time on my calendar. So I have blocks of time that I have set aside that would be specifically for that. So rather than, oh, I can do it right now. Oh, hey, let's set up this next Wednesday at this time. And usually I try to get more than one person on there uh, at a time. So that might be something that you all could use as well, um, just to help cut down on the amount of time that you're having to spend one-on-one -on -one with people that just can't quite get it on their own. Um, so that's what I had for, I think everybody's suggestions are just fabulous. And I'm so glad I could get on live. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Mary. And you brought up a good point. You said you try to get multiple people on. There's a tool. It's called Mailbox Power 101 and Mailbox Power 102 that you don't have to do that with your customers. It's already set up for you. It's there. It's provided to all users, no cost. So you can direct them there. And Mary brought up another great point of like the FISBOs. So if you're reaching out to real estate, you could go create a favorites folder for real estate for bonuses and go grab the most used because there's so many automations for real estate. You could go grab the top 10 real estate automations and put it in a favorites folder and say, if you sign up, I'll give you the link to the favorites folder so you don't have to go spend time in the design catalog. So without having to train or 
Maybe you're not a designer. There are lots of ways you can provide bonuses. Um, well, the other thing that you can do too is, you know, sometimes businesses don't have, they don't want to get lost in another system. That's where we have concierge services that you can direct people to. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to pay any extra, but if you're in business, that's part of the game. You pay for mm -hmm. things as, as you need them. So don't be afraid to refer people to the concierge service. And that's another great thing about the executive account. If you have an executive account, they can use the purple bell and get help from, uh, from someone at corporate. So there's a lot of good ways to be able to get people the help they need. They just need to be understand that if you're in business, you just have to pay for some of those services. And if they're not willing to pay for them, they're probably not your ideal client. Mary. And I just wanted to clarify, I do first send people, try to get them to go to the calls that corporate has for the overview. But a lot of people don't have time during the middle of the day where, because where I'm at, it's around lunchtime. Yep. And so then I do schedule a uh, evening time. Uh, I don't ever do them during the day because first of all, I'm busy. Secondly, <laughs> if they can't make it to the one that you guys have, then they probably aren't going to make it to like a two o'clock one. So then, then that's why I do that. And if they can't make it to any of them, then I just say, Oh, good luck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I do try to accommodate. Yeah. Awesome. Last, last thing, Kathy, and then we need to wrap it up because it is past oh, yeah. our uh, hour. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that, um, yes, the executive account get the one-on-one, -on -one, and that's that's great. They can use that whenever they want with the concierge. But remember that the pro account people also have one 30-minute new user orientation one-on-one -on -one call as well. So don't forget to give that to people that just sign up on the pro so they can at least get that half hour um, one on one. It, it, uh, they go over the system and they help them get set up is basically what it is. So if really? you don't have that link, actually. Oh, man, put that in the chat because I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nobody <grab> <laughs> showed me. I just did it. You know, I've figured it out and asked questions. Yeah. Um, Whoa. It's only a one time, but um, it helps know. in the very beginning. Does the customer get an email about that? No, I honestly, didn't they have to chat that. in, but I'm telling you because I'm well, here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. And Mike, you asked a question in the chat. Is that the video? And no. Uh, well, wait it a minute. Is. Let me see. No, I don't, our one -on -one yeah, but I don't think that's the, no, that's from a year ago. There's an updated one and it's the one that's on the, they don't need to go to YouTube. They can go right to their mailbox power account and it sits right on the main page of the mailbox power account. Um, It's a purple button and it, for users that have been with the system for a while, it's down a little bit. You might have to scroll down and it's purple. It says Mailbox Power 101. If they are a brand new user, it shows up at the top. That's the easiest way to get to that training. So I, do I just also... put it in the chat. <clears throat> it, uh, Bobby Joe does it. And it's half an hour and it's for brand new pro users. And um. She usually reaches out to them, right, Kathy? Or should we be giving them the link to go ahead and just schedule it right away? Well, I'm giving it to you to schedule to these few people. We do not advertise it or she'd be bombarded. She does three a yeah. day. Yeah. So they have to book it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, she's booked up for four or five days and they have to wait six days, but whatever. But it is worth it for people that, you know, are very brand new. If you don't have time, Give them that link and they can, they, you know, brand new users. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Well, oh, I great, love that. Great discussion again tonight. Thank you for everyone participating and sharing your ideas and helping um, Nanette and um, Gail. Thanks for sharing Lulu. Um, you know, Mary, we had lots of great discussion. 
um, tonight, and we really appreciate that. That's what we want this to be is a mastermind. I want you to keep in mind um, for future calls. We also want to keep in mind that not everybody that might join this call is working this full time. Many of the people that will join this call will be somebody that might be a real estate agent that just wants to share it with a few other real estate agents that um, as a great tool. So we also need to keep that in mind when we're doing these calls is that it, it's about building a mailbox power business, but it's more about growing your brick and mortar business that you have and how can you share this easily with others to help other business owners. So, um, with that, again, uh, we thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, we do appreciate your time and we do appreciate your input because like Brenda says, this isn't about us. It's about all of us. Uh, and uh, we do appreciate everybody's uh, contribution. So with that, we'll say good night and we'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank night. Night. Good night. Good night.